This week, Dave's trying to start the latest and greatest new fishing trend. We'll see how well it catches on. This technique is so simple, so easy, and so overthought. That is a freak! Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. is the whole deal right here. I mean, it really is as simple as if you've crappie fished, that sort of thing. I mean, this is basically an Eagle Claw crappie float, just a small float. The reason I'm doing this is because I want that, I mean, the, a drop shot's great. It would work perfect in this situation if it wasn't for the bottom. If I had a sandy bottom, I could shake it along. And that's really the same approach I'm doing here. It's just a simple slip float. So you got your bobber stopper right there and that's what stops it. So if I'm in, you know, a foot of water, I set the bobber stopper there, bait drops down, stopper goes bleep, it stops, and it's a foot below the float. But if I all of a sudden, you know, that brake starts working down to four feet, I'll you know, crank that bad boy way up that line, and now my bait goes to four feet. It's so easy and so simple. It's like having a drop shot, except you can change the lead just like that. Smoked it just that quick. Your buddies might laugh at you. We're going float fishing. But they won't laugh when they see what this bait can do. Oh, man, this is such a crazy little lethal technique. And that neutrally buoyant bait that just sits right in front of them. And what makes it so lethal is just the simple fact that you can adjust it so quickly and so easily. Whew. Gonzo. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. It. On the floating flatworm. Had to pull a sneaky sneaky on you. Oh. The float and flatworm. It's a modern day version of the float and fly. And when you get fish that are just kind of swiping at that bait, the float and flatworm makes them go munch munch. Oh, there he goes. That was beautiful. Nice release. 
That's right, I'm fishing with a float, bobber, whatever you want to call it. This is a modern day spin on the float and fly, except we've replaced the fly with this dirty little Maxent flatworm. There's fish. Oh! Little dude. I mean, the way fish react to this presentation is very, very reminiscent of how they reacted to a drop shot when you first started throwing it. And with good reason. What you gotta remember is fish are used to seeing baits that have a weight that pulls them down. And you give them something a little different looking, something a little neutrally buoyant, like this floating flatworm, and they can't not munch it. There we go. Oh, good one too. He's whacking at the tail. He's not getting the hook. Basically the whole deal with this approach is it's, it's not that it's that much more effective. It's just more effective in this situation. And the reason that it's more effective is because it eliminates downtime. When you think of the amount of time you spend hung up in those rocks, it kills your day and it also spooks a lot of fish. I mean, every time that bait gets hung up and you're reefing on it, you're spooking every fish in that area. So this basically just eliminates the downtime and puts the odds in your favor. Whether you're fishing for two hours or two days, you want to put the odds in your favor. They can't handle it. Oh, just a little dude, but man, you dropped that floating flatworm in front of them, and they gotta munch it. See ya. Again, think about it like a jig. I mean, I literally just let it sit there. It's kind of like a jig slash drop shot, same deal. Now pop it along just a couple of times. Give it a quick dum dum dum. Let it sit there for a second, then dum dum dum. And the whole time, that bait is effectively in the fish's strike zone. I mean, if there's a fish in the area, you don't have to worry about I'm snagged or I can't get it to them and you can leave a bait sitting there for a long time. So when you come across, you know, that little rock break that you think there's a fish on, you drop that right there and shake it. And there's nothing that's ever gonna move it. I mean, even a drop shot, you, you're shaking a drop shot. In this rock, there's a pretty good chance it's gonna get hung and shut you down. Not with this little floating flatworm. Oh, there's a fish over there, swimming towards my bait. Come on, eat it. There, oh, he swung at it. He tried to grab it. The rods in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device.
another giant. <laughs> oh, easy. Oh, man, this is one of those simple, easy techniques that is so overlooked. Because in today's fast-paced world of bass fishing, everybody wants to cover water and do it in a hurry. But sometimes, slowing down and getting back to what you got started is exactly what it takes to get them to munch. fish cruising in the shallows. Oh, you throw this floating flatworm at him and it drives them crazy. I mean, and this is really the simplest form of fishing there is. Every one of you has done it, but it's just a little spin on an old school technique with a modern day spin to it. Oh, and some big time results. This technique is so simple, so easy, and so overthought. You know, it's just a simple way of fishing. And really, you know, what led me to this, let me get this fish back in the water before I explain that. Oh, man, it hooks every one of them right. Look at that sexy, sexy critter right there. That is a chunk smallmouth. For as far north as we are, Whew, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. Here he goes. Man, that is so, so cool. And as I said, I mean, this, this isn't rocket science. I mean, this is a technique that every one of you pretty much has fished. I mean, if you fished, you fished with a float. I don't care whether it's for trout or panfish, it doesn't matter, you've used a float. But the whole reason I started doing this is when you get to places like this with, with that clingy, clingy rock, you know, the Maxent flatworm is basically a drop shot bait. Most people will tell you they throw it on a drop shot, but throwing a drop shot somewhere like here is an absolute nightmare because, you know, you see the, the rocks we're fishing. I mean, they're all different sizes, super sticky. You're gonna spend more time getting your weight stuck than you are ever gonna be presenting your bait right. And that's where this technique came from. You can adjust the depth depending on where you're fishing on this break. If I'm in three feet, I'll move it up higher, I'll move it up lower, but it disconnects your presentation from the bottom. And the bottom is what shuts down your presentation. You get stuck in those rocks and you're gonna spend all day donating tungsten to the lake. This keeps you out of the junk. Don't connect with the bottom, just float above it. And that little max scent flatworm, it puts that aroma in the water. They smell it. It just sits right there and they're like, it's not gonna sit there longer. It won't sit there all day. I mean, it's gonna move. It'll, it'll leave, won't it? No, it's not leaving. No, no. <laughs> Some stuff is just good. To book your trip of a lifetime at Beauchene Wilderness Lodge, visit Beauchene.com. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. Here's fish. Yeah. Little Junior. You are much too small for our television program. You should addition another. Yeah, I knocked my hat off on cue because it's kind of freaking professional you're dealing with. Ooh. 
This is your key right here, your little bobber stopper. You know, you can move that up and down your line. You can move it 20 feet deep if you want to fish a, a big drop off, but it's really key to be adjusting that. I don't want it right on bottom. I just kind of want it to hover just above the bottom. Floating flatworm's gonna take off. Gonna go down everywhere where you go. Big giant red and white bobbers everywhere. Fish. Just like that. Man, it's so simple. It's so, so simple, but so, so lethal. Come here, dude. Oh, gone. Gonzo. Pulled on him a little hard, but man, it's another upside to this. I mean, I threw that bait and I'm kind of looking away and, you know, looking around where to make that next cast. And I just look over and I see that float go under. It does give you a little bit of a buffer. And what I mean by that is if that were a jig or a drop shot, he would have felt me and dropped the line. But because uh, of this bobber stopper, you know, the way that slip float works, he doesn't feel that much pull against him. So it does give you a little buffer if you're not paying attention. And I don't know if you realize this, but a lot of times I'm not thinking about what I'm doing at all. I mean, I freaking bugs all over me. That's what I'm thinking about right now. You, you would think, I mean, he's all the dude's gotta do is 13 freaking shows a year. You could focus and talk to the camera and be all about that, but freaking bugs. that grass it's all about the edge <laughs> find a fish you find an edge I mean it really is just that simple and that's the one thing people forget if you're not near an edge there's a pretty good chance you're not near a fish come here junior you're not big enough to be like that little dude but man awesome 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 I always say Bait, presentations, techniques, I mean, they are all tools. Figure out the right tool for the job you're confronted with. I mean, if you watch this show, you know I love drop shotting. And I love drop shotting a little flatworm like this. But you just can't do it effectively amongst this rock. I mean, you can swim a jig and do a lot of things, but you're going to spend a lot of time hung up. Remove the problem. And the problem is the bottom and how you do it is with the float and flatworm. fish right there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. That is a big Beauchene bass. Oh man, strong, strong fish. Oh, 
Oh, man. What a beautiful, beautiful small jaw. And for as far north as we are, that's a big dude. Uh oh, Trocar is buried in there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. It ain't your fault, dude. You had no choice. Floating flatworm is just one of those presentations that drives fish crazy. <laughs> for eight and a half hours, made 401 casts, and caught 19 fish. That's it for the score. Now time for the facts. Dave used a Berkeley Powerbait Maxent flatworm, rigged on a Trocar Pro V finesse jig head with an Eagle Claw balsa style slip float and bobber stopper. Fished on an Abu Garcia nine foot six inch medium light action Veritas spinning rod, paired with a Revo Premier spinning reel, spooled up with 10 pound test Berkeley X9 braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.